Good to be in Vegas. Come on, how many know you have a cool city? I love my city and country, but I always tell people that um, that come from South Africa, they come visiting for conferences or whatever, and uh, I says, you know what? If you go to L.A., Orange County, you know, it's not too much different. But if you really want to feel like you're in a different country, you got to go to Vegas. <laughs> And uh, so I, I, it's good to be with you guys uh, today and last couple, well, since yesterday, uh, but uh, it's good to be with all the Vegas churches uh, this week. And then I'm here for another week or, uh, well, I'm here for another uh, total of three, three more weeks or plus minus three weeks, but my wife's coming in about a week, week and a half. I'm counting the days. She's coming for the leadership retreat. And then after leadership retreat, we're going to go back together back to South Africa, so it's also our anniversary, so it's going to be a nice time. Amen. It's going to be a nice time. My sons are even staying back, so it's just going to be with us, and we're going to have a great time, and then we're going to go to leadership retreat, and then go back. Amen. It's good to see Pastor Mondo in the house tonight. Amen. East Las Vegas, as we mentioned a few times, but thank you for coming tonight. Longtime friend of mine grew up in ministry together. I'm also very blessed with God is doing his life. Um, but as Pastor, you know, was mentioning, Pastor Benny, Sister Evelyn, we come from the same church. And actually, he, he uh, uh, was already pastoring when I got saved 26, uh, 27 years ago. And I heard about him coming up. I didn't know a lot about Victory Outreach. I got saved a teenager. But I would hear about the men that have gone out already from, from Pastor Bruce and Pastor Benny was, was the first one to go out of, of the Orange County churches and uh, be sent here to Vegas. And I, and I want to honor you and your wife's um, longevity. I really want to say thank you for your longevity. I respect it. I highly respect it. The longer I'm in ministry, the longer I respect those longer in ministry. <laughs> Because I say, my God, if I've gone through things in 26, 27 years, I could imagine 40 years or plus. So I really honor you and thank you for allowing me to speak. But to also honor and respect your longevity. And I wanted to say that. Thank you and I love you very much. Like you said, we get to know each other. We've known each other, but we're getting more to know each other. Amen. So amen. It's good to be with you guys tonight. Um, I have, I have so you can have your seats. I have a, a video I want to play. Thank you guys. Thank you, worship team. Great job today. Amen. Um, when I would come, you know, I've been in South Africa almost 14 years. And um, God's been faithful to our church. But I, I would come and I would wear these African shirts, you know. I'd say, okay, these African shirts, you know, I'd wear them when I preach. And um, eventually what happened is uh, people would say, man, I, you know, I want to, where can I get one? I says, well, you got to go on a 30-hour plane ride. <laughs> Anybody want to go on a 30-hour plane ride? So I made it easy for you, and I brought shirts. You only got to take 30-second walk, amen, to the back, and uh, you can pick up shirts. It, it's, it's to support the work there in the mission, and uh, you can wear them for United We Can Day. So feel free to do that after the service. Today I have a quick video. It's about a minute. It's not even that long. But all these videos and pictures are from this year. They're from this year. They're not a compiled of all the greatest events of Victor Arch Pretoria. They are from this year only. And God has been faithful there to our church. I'm proud of our team. I'm proud of my wife. I'm proud of what God has done there. Uh, we have one, one girl with us that's from the States, but she, she, she got married to a South African as well. But other than that, all my church is all South Africans. There's no other Americans there. All my leadership, all the ministers, all the people, they are from within. And God has raised up a church there. And I think God is, is, has been faithful because... When I got there, I didn't know one person. Imagine that. And now we have a church of a few hundred people. The Lord's been faithful. So just real quick, it won't take long. You can just go ahead and just see what God's doing in Pretoria.
right, that is Pretoria, South Africa. And Pretoria is the capital of South Africa. It's like the White House, you know, it's where Mandela was, was serving as president. It's, it's a very political city, but there's four million people there. Four million people. It's a huge city. In fact, we could launch easily five churches in Pretoria, Victory Outreach churches there. Uh, there's so many, so many people there. But at the same time, it's very political. It's different um, in the sense of a lot of professionals, a lot of people that are entrepreneurs. It's kind of like a little bit like Vegas, amen, a lot of entrepreneurs. And uh, so keep, keep us in prayer. Uh, we are believing. We bought our, our men's home a couple years ago. We bought a seven-acre property for our men's home, and uh, it can take up to 70 guys into our recovery home. Amen. We bought that property. It's huge. It's a huge project. It's going to continue to be a project probably until Jesus comes back. Amen. Seven acres. But, um, but at the same time now, we are trusting to buy our own building. That's what we're praying about. I know that uh, we're believing. So keep us in prayer. That's where we're at. And uh, the Lord's been faithful to me. I've been saved 26, 27 years. And I went single to South Africa. And, of course, I'm no longer single. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I don't know if you're thankful, but I'm thankful for the Jesus. Because, <laughs> amen, I waited a long time. That's another story for another day. I'm writing a book, actually. I'm writing a book. Just be ready for that book, amen. It's going to be on dating and singlehood, so, because nobody can beat my record. If anybody wants to beat my record, you could write the book. My record is 22 years single. Anybody want to beat my record? Raise your hand, amen. Anybody beat my record? <laughs> Amen. But I stayed single a long time. Let's get into it tonight. And uh, I believe the Holy Spirit's going to speak to us and God's going to move at the altars. So get ready. And uh, let's all stand. Amen. And turn to the book of Acts chapter 3. And we're going to read the story here. Acts chapter 3 verses 1. I'm going to start for the sake of time because we're going to read till 10. Okay, the, the Bible says, verses 1, Now Peter and John went together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask for alms to them that entered into the temple. When seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. And Peter looked at him and said, With John, look at us. And he gave unto him his eyes, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I have none, but as such as I have, I give to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand, the right hand, lifted up him, and immediately his feet and his ankles and his bones received strength. And he leaped up, stood, and stood up and walked. And he entered with him into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. Two more verses. And all of the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was him that sat at the alms of the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were all filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened unto him and amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word. Help me this uh, after tonight, Lord, to minister it. Give me the strength. Give me the, your Holy Spirit and your power today. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Now, when you're seated, you might feel convicted when you hear the title of this message. Go ahead and put it up there. You read that? I'm tired of sitting. How many are grateful tonight? How many are truly grateful? Honestly, like how many are honest? Because see, a, a lot of, of gratefulness equals our passion. If we lose our gratefulness, then we're going to lose our passion. We're going to lose our zeal. We're going to lose our our ability to have some type of joy in our lives if we lose our gratefulness. Another story in Luke chapter 17, 
verses 15 says this. I want to use it also as a parallel to this exact story that I just read. But you don't have to turn there. But Luke chapter 17, verse 15 is the story of the ten leopards. And one of them, verse 15 of, of chapter 17. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice. And glorify God. You notice that very, very similar to the man that was healed. The Bible says he leaped up with joy. And he was healed. He says he fell down to his face and his feet. Giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus said. Were there not ten that was cleansed? Where are the other nine? They are not found. They return to give God, have they not turned to give God glory except for this one man? And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made you whole. How many know it's different to be only healed, but also to be made whole? It's two different things. Because people could be healed, but walk away and still feel empty. People could actually even get a breakthrough tonight, but when you walk out of this place, you feel sad again really fast. You could even be broken at these altars and get a, a miracle from God or prophecy from God, which God might do tonight. He might give out prophecies. He might give out words of knowledge. He might give out, you know, certain type of, you know, uh, uh, words of wisdom to you tonight. But you may walk right out of there, out of this place, back into your car and still feel sad. Why? Because you might be healed, but you're not whole. And Jesus said, because you're grateful and because you show gratefulness, not only am I going to heal you, but I'm going to make you whole as well. In other words, I'm going to fulfill you. See, when you look at the word gratefulness, because that's what you see in both of these stories. You see it with the, the man that was crippled and you see it with the man that had leprosy. Both of them were grateful people. That's why they went back to Jesus or they went into the temple to praise God because they were grateful. And if you break down this word grateful, it means great and it means full. In other words, great is something, of course, that is something that uh, you feel good about. But full means you're fulfilled. So in other words, when you're grateful, then you're actually going to be full of joy and you're going to be full of of some purpose you're going to be filled of passion in other words when Jesus healed somebody he didn't just say you know what here's your healing feel good about your life but he said no I want you to do something for me I want you to do something with that healing I want you to do something with that breakfulness I want you to do something that's going to actually impact other people's lives in other words miracles and healings were never just for the individual but they were for the people that God was going to use them to touch that were around them I come here to tell you tonight that the Holy Spirit spirit is going to do something in your life but listen it's not going to be just for you but it's going to be for the people connected to you it's going to be for your mom it's going to be for your dad you're going to get a breakthrough today and it's going to be for your co-worker tomorrow it's going to be for your boss tomorrow it's going to be for your employees tomorrow it might be for a stranger but whatever the case may be is that your breakthrough is just not for you but you're grateful for the people that are connected to you See, I don't know about you, but I shouldn't be here tonight. Ah, I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about, but I should not be here tonight. I should not be in church. I should not even be a pastor. I shouldn't be a guest speaker. Come on now. I shouldn't be a missionary. The reason I'm saying that is because it's only because of the grace of God over my life. And because I have not forgotten that, I have protected my gratefulness. See, I believe the Lord wants to do something in your life tonight, but it's connected to the level of your gratefulness tonight as well. See, because your level of gratefulness will equal your level of passion. Your level of gratefulness, there's a lot of people that they won't serve in the church because they have lost their gratefulness. You're still sitting down when God wants you to get up. You say, it's my time to receive. No, it's not your time to receive anymore. It's time to give now. Your time of receiving is over. 
You're going to receive still, don't get me wrong, but now it's also about not just receiving, but God wants you to get up and use the gifts and use the abilities and use the talents and use those things that are inside of you. In fact, tonight the Holy Spirit is stirring up the gifts that are in this house, amen, because he wants to do something in your life and he wants to do something in your church, but he needs you to stir up your gifts. But how are you going to stir up your gift? Well, the Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit One of them is gratefulness. In other words, one of the attributes of of the Holy Spirit living in you is that you have gratefulness. So in other words, if you're ungrateful tonight, come on somebody, you may not say it, but you may feel a certain way, then you're, you're going to have a hard time allowing the Holy Spirit to work through your life. You have to protect that gratefulness in your life. See, this man was sitting at the gate, just like these men were there as leopards. And Jesus, just like Jesus and just like Peter and John, they seen this person in their situation and they were saying, you know what? I'm tired of seeing you in this situation, but at the same time, are you tired of sitting down? When God wants you to get up. See, I believe the Lord is here tonight and he wants to bless you. And he wants to use you. And he wants to restore something that's been broken in your life tonight. Amen. But what you have to do is you have to become on fire for Jesus again. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to ignite you again. And how are you going to do that? you got to go back to when you first got saved. Or when you first felt the Holy Spirit. Or when you first had that hunger and thirst. And it doesn't matter how long you've been saved. A lot of times, unfortunately, sometimes even experience can be a challenge for us. Because we no longer lean on the Holy Spirit, but we lean now on what we know and what we know how to do. When God wants to do a new thing in our lives, amen. But in order to do a new thing, sometimes we have to be reminded, amen, of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, amen. And what Jesus did on the cross, it will give you energy to do more for God. Because you'll say, God, if you did that for me, then surely I can do what you're asking me to do today. (laughs) See, I believe that. The greater the pain, the greater the trauma, the greater the hurt in your life will equal the greater greatness of your gratefulness. Many of us went through traumatic situations in our our upbringing. Many of us. How many didn't have a mom? How many of us didn't grow up with a dad? Come on, somebody. How many didn't grow up with a mom or a dad? Come on now. How many of us didn't even didn't even like our mom or dad? Don't raise your hand. Amen. (laughs) Say, I did have a mom and dad, but I didn't like them. Amen. They weren't good people. Whatever. Most of us here tonight have traumatic situations that we've been through in our lives. And if you have been through a traumatic situation, then you should guard your gratefulness because you know what you come from. You know how you started, amen. It doesn't matter even what you have today. You know where you started, where Jesus found you. I don't know about you, but I know how Jesus found my life. And because I remember how he found my life, I want to give him my entire life until the day that I die, amen. I want to lay down my life for the cause of Jesus Christ. Why? Because I know know how he found me how many remember how Jesus found us (coughs) see this man the Bible says was lame from birth so he, he wasn't even like you know something happened to him and he lost his legs no from the very entrance into this world he was had pain in his life he had a long term challenge in his life And you find what's interesting is that gate that he was put on every day was called beautiful. Because historically that gate was beautiful. But how many know that his life was ugly? Come on somebody. His life wasn't something that probably anybody wanted to be. He didn't probably grow up thinking that, you know, this is what I'm going to end up. I'm going to end up a beggar. It doesn't even give a name. Come on now. His name is Beggar, and he's sitting there at the gate every day. In fact, it even emphasizes that he was put there every day. In other words, he couldn't even get himself there. People had to put him there every single day. And every day, people would pass him by. Because why? Because 
even Peter and John, who were Jewish men, they would pray three times a day in the temple. So that meant three times every day for as long as this man was alive, they would pass him by and nobody found it a little bit frustrating to see this man sitting at the gate every day. But something happened. Listen, something happens when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of your life. Peter and John, before chapter 2, or after chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So years and years they would pass by this guy and think nothing of it. And probably they thought to themselves, well, you know, he's put himself there. That's going to be his life. But see, something happens when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you. Something happens to, I don't know about you, but before it was all about me and nobody else. <laughs> but when the Holy Spirit got a hold of me, I cared about people I don't even know. I started to go out of my way just to help somebody when it didn't benefit me anymore. Come on now. I started to do something for somebody that, I, that was a total stranger. And guess what? It felt good to do it. It wasn't even like, man, I got to do this. Man, I got. No, it was because the Holy Spirit was busy in my heart and busy in my mind. And I found fulfillment. Come on now. There's that word again. You find the wholeness of life when you're doing something for the Lord. Amen. And because of that great knowing where Peter and John they knew where they came from and they looked at this man and says look at us in other words every day you know who we are we pass by you every day but something has changed in my life something happened to me the Holy Spirit touched my life and I'm tired of sitting seeing you sit at the gate it's time to come in with us it's time to get up out of your seat and listen tonight the Holy Spirit is here for you today and he wants you to stand up he wants you to get out of your seat amen and he wants you to do what he's asking you to do he wants you to say what he's asking you to say why because the Holy Spirit is busy here tonight like he was with this man. He looked at him because Peter and John were also people who had mistakes. We know Peter's story. Most of us, he left the Lord just like all the other disciples. He went back to fishing. And here he is telling this man, you know me, but I'm no longer the man that you used to know. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit now. And I'm the same Holy Spirit that touched my life. I want that same Holy Spirit to touch your life right now. And he said those beautiful words, silver and gold I do not have. But what I have, I give to you. Listen, it's not going to be us, but it's going to be the Holy Spirit working through us. That's going to give people the breakthroughs that we're trying to give them. Listen, I believe in a nice hug. I believe in a, I believe in a encouraging word. I believe in a handshake. I believe in a, you know, but sometimes as even as a pastor, we can only do so much. We need the Holy Spirit to touch the people. We need the Holy Spirit to do the work in the people. Why? Because it's the Holy Spirit that begins to restore certain things, not just physically for this man, but it wasn't just a physical blessing, but it was also a spiritual and also a, uh, also a mental blessing that God is going to make him not just healed in his body but healed all over his body listen God wants to heal you of some emotional pain tonight God wants to heal you of some things in your life that are holding you back from getting up and going into the gates symbolically right because the gates represent for this man barriers that were stopping him from being everything that he was supposed to be and you might have gates in your life that are stopping you from going and walking in and I come here to tell you tonight God wants you to get rid of those gates and God wants you to step not on the outside, but God wants you to walk in into what God has called you to do tonight. But what you need is you need a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that this man gave them attention. <coughs> and the Bible says that he <coughs> lifted him up. He lifted him up. And this man began to get healed. God began to heal this man of his crippleness. 
Why? Because it was power that was leaving the apostles into this man. It was power that was flowing through the apostles, through this man to get healed. And I come here to tell you today that it's the Holy Spirit that gives us the power to get up out of our situations tonight. Listen, I have traveled the world. Well, I'll say I traveled to 12, 13 countries around the world. And I have seen the same power that God delivered me from, that God has delivered hundreds of South Africans from. I've seen God's power all over Europe. I've seen God's power all over the South Pacific. I've seen God's power all over Asia. I've seen God's power. I come here to tell you today that God's power is here tonight. If you need to be delivered of drug addiction, if you need to be delivered of cigarettes, come on now. If you need to be delivered of cussing, come on now. If you need to be delivered of anxiety or complexes or insecurities, tonight is your night because there's power in the room tonight that God wants to heal you. Ooh, I don't know what's wrong with my voice. Amen. Devil's a liar. <coughs> See, sometimes we lose our passion. Listen, sometimes we lose our passion because we need a new baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, because we could function in our own strength for a while, but at some point, it's like when you first get saved. You ever seen a new believer? They're just so on fire for Jesus. I mean, you, and, and you've been saved 10, 20, 30 years, and you look to them and you say, man, I, I remember when I was like that. Because you go through stages, and you remember that, when you first got saved, you know, I believe this. When, you're, when you first get saved, the devil doesn't even attack you. Because he's like, I, I'm, I'm going to give that guy a break. Because I, I, no matter what I do to this guy, he's just happy. Amen. He never, he never, he's never sad. Anything, uh, the world could be falling apart. And he's just singing and whistling, amen, in the, in the wind, amen, and just happy at life. Why? Because you're, you're on the honeymoon. Come on now. But as you grow in the Lord... Things start happening, and trials start coming, and misunderstandings happen. Challenges come. The enemy comes to steal your passion. And then what happens is he starts to make you focus on things that are negative and things that are going to discourage you to the point where you lose your gratefulness. And if you lose your passion and you lose your gratefulness, and sooner or later, You'll no longer tap into the presence of God like you used to be. And I want you to know tonight that there's power that is evident that is here tonight so that you could be able to experience that renewal. How many need a renewal tonight? I said, how many need a renewal tonight? To reignite. <coughs> That's my assignment tonight. To reignite you. Because we got power. There was a lady who was praying all night and she was praying for her children and praying for her family. How many moms pray for your families tonight? Any mamas or grandmas out there that pray? Well, this lady would pray all night, but the devil would come and try to tell her it's not working. And the enemy would come and tell her it's never going to happen. And the enemy would come and try to discourage her and he would try to lie to her. And there came a point where she got so upset at the devil, you know, that she started screaming loud, devil, you're a liar. The Lord rebuke you. And she started praying and praying. And the enemy came even stronger. And the enemy came so strong that she felt her bed move. So she got even more angry at the devil. Come on, somebody. And she started Telling that enemy, you're not going to win. The devil, you're not going to win. And she started screaming and, and she started pleading the blood of Jesus Christ. And she said, devil, I need you to flee from my presence right now. You're not welcome in my house. You're not welcome in my children. She started praying heaven down. And the devil left. How many of the devil will flee? I said, how many of the devil will flee? And then she went back to sleep. She was sleeping for a few minutes, and then she woke up, and she said, Devil, 
come back and put my bed where it was. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you got power. See, you should never be the same person when the Holy Spirit begins to put new passion and new power in your life. Something begins to take place in your heart. Something begins to take place in your spirit. It doesn't matter how many times you've seen souls saved. It doesn't matter how many times, see, how, how maybe miracles or events or different things you've seen. How many know God wants to do something fresh and God wants to do something new in our lives, amen? And just like this man that wasn't expecting anything but a little bit of money, God says, I'm not just going to give you money, but I'm going to give you something more important than money. I'm going to give you power from heaven that's going to touch your life. And it's not just going to touch your body, but it's going to touch your mind and it's going to touch your heart and it's going to touch everybody around that's connected to you. I come here to tell you tonight that the Holy Spirit is going to touch your life and you're going to light other people on fire. You're going to light other people that you don't even know on fire. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is going to do something fresh and something new inside of your heart tonight. Do you believe that tonight, church? Peter and John looked at him and said, I don't have anything, but what I have, I can give to you. And the Holy Spirit touched this man and he was healed. See, this man was full of pain, full of suffering. But God is about ready to make his suffering into one of the greatest praise that anybody has ever, ever experienced in their life. Listen, I come here to tell you, if you've been going through a painful time, and not just for a month, not just even for a year, but it's been for a long time, I come here to tell you that God's going to give you double for your trouble tonight, amen, that the long as your pain was, God's going to double it in your praise, amen. Your praise is going to be longer than your pain was. I said your praise is going to be longer than your pain was. Your season of pain will not be longer than your season of praise. This man began to praise. I was praying for a lady in my church. We've been praying for months. She has cancer. And we've been praying for months for her. Believing for healing over her body. And while I was here a week ago. She sent me a video, said, Pastor, look at this video. And the video is her at the hospital ringing the bell. She said, Pastor, I have no more cancer in my body. The Lord has healed me of cancer in my body. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for the church's prayers. Thank you for what you've done. And she began to pray. And she began to ask me, Pastor, you know, I said, you got to testify to the church because we've been praying for months for this. And she said, Pastor, should we wait for you to come back? I said, it's not about me. I want you to tell the church, amen, next Sunday what the Lord has done for you. Why? Because the Lord is about to give you your praise back. You've gone through a lot of pain and I want you to start praising God now because your praise is going to be longer than your pain was. Last year I prayed for a lady that was that didn't that couldn't have kids. She 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 was believing to have children. And 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 I you know I didn't I didn't uh, look for it or ask for it. She came and asked me she said, Pastor, I need prayer. I, I, I can't have children. And, and I says, Lord, open up her womb. Lord, give her children. Give her the desire of her heart. Well, guess what? In January, she sent me a picture of her baby that was born. Why? Because there is power in praise. There is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is gratefulness that begins to deepen our praise. And that praise begins to give power. That power begins to give healing. And that power begins to renew our strength to to do something that we've never done before. I come here to tell you you're not done yet. Victory Outreach Las Vegas, amen. There is greater things ahead for your life, but you got to stir up that praise and you got to stir up that gratefulness and you got to get up and do what God's called you to do. God is looking for someone to praise him even right now. God is looking for someone to praise him without the piano without the drums, 
without the nice song, without the good things that we know. Don't get me wrong, those things are good, but God's looking for somebody that got to praise and a shout inside of their spirit today, amen. Why? Because it is praise and it is gratefulness that unlocks the power of God over somebody's life. It's when you begin to praise the Lord, even when you don't even feel like it. Come on now. Even when all things are going bad, I dare somebody tonight to stand up and give God some praise tonight. And watch when you praise God and the power of God will fill your life. Nothing is more powerful than God. See, I remember sitting in the back of the church when I was 13 years old, never read the Bible before, never, never gone to church before, wasn't raised in church, but I remember sitting in the back of the church and I felt the presence and the power and God, and all of a sudden, I started praising the Lord. I never clapped my hands before. I never sang a song before, but something inside of me wanted to praise God, and that praise, I remember breaking before God, and that praise, Listen, listen, that praise gave me a gratefulness that has kept me the last 26, 27 years. Not saying not just coming to church, but Lord, whatever you want for my life. I'm so grateful because I came to you empty. I came to you with nothing. I came to you with all kinds of pain. In fact, I came to you with all kinds of mess things, but you began to turn it around. How can I not give you back my life? Can have your seats. I'm not done yet. You guys can stay. It's fine though. See, that praise in my life when I was 13 years old has kept me to this day. I'll be honest with you. Let me tell you the truth. I don't, still to this day, I've never praised God as best as I praised Him that day. I'm still chasing that day that the Holy Spirit first touched my life. It's like I want that day to happen again. It's probably not going to happen until I get to heaven. But I'm going to search after God. I'm going to search after the Holy Spirit. And listen. People ask me, how can you be a missionary for 17, 18 years? How can you travel? And how can you go all these places? It's because I am grateful. I said, Lord, whatever you want me to do. It didn't, it didn't mean South Africa. At first it meant the sound booth. At first it meant the setup team. At first it meant whatever it is that you want me to do. And Lord, if you see me fit to be a missionary, then I'll go and do that too. Whatever you want me to do, Lord. It was because of the gratefulness. Guard your gratefulness. Because your gratefulness will equal your passion. And it will equal your praise. See, <coughs> there was a kid. Uh, this, this, this trip, I preached in Dallas. And there was a kid in the, at the altar call. And I don't, I don't do it cliche I, I, I really be careful with that. I don't try to be cliche -ish. But I really felt this is what the Lord told me. That the Lord called him to preach. And the Lord had called him to preach around the world. And the Lord had called him to preach all over different parts of the world. And the Lord had called him to, to, to preach in Africa and preach all over. I don't do that. I don't do it cliche. It's because I, I'm, I, I, I fear the Lord. But I felt strong to tell this young man. He was about 12, 11, 12 years old. After the service, the mom comes to me. And she says, Pastor, my son has been saved since he was 7 years old. He gave his life to the Lord at seven years old. And the day he gave his life to the Lord, he said the Lord told him at seven years old that he was called to preach in South Africa. And here is this missionary from South Africa telling him that God had called him around the world to give him confirmation. And I didn't know. See, you don't know how God can use your life. When you allow the power of God to flow through your life today, how many know there's callings in the house tonight? See, this man became an instant preacher. This man was healed, and then he became an instant preacher. Now, he didn't preach over the mic, but he opened doors that the apostles didn't open yet. Read the story in chapter 4. The Bible says that, Peter and John now stood before the church council and all the different religious leaders of that day. 
And they were ready to throw them in prison and ready to throw them in jail. Eventually they did. But in that moment they couldn't because they couldn't deny what Jesus did for this man. See, I want you to know that your trauma is not for no reason. Your trauma is going to open doors. And the power of God is going to become something that displays in your life that other people are going to want to know why and how. And they're going to say, you really are going to, you're going to do that or you're going to be that. You're going to be the one that nobody thinks. In fact, some of you feel overlooked tonight, amen. And God is saying you're not overlooked. He's just allowing you to go through what he needs you to go through because he's going to display you on a high level that's going to give him glory. See, a person who is grateful, listen, even a person that is grateful will always show up. See, this man, listen, this man was healed, he praised, and then he went to church. He didn't, he didn't do like the other nine, the leopards. Say, I got healed. All right, I'm gone. I'm going to go do what I got to do. No, just like this one leopard and just like this man, that they went turned back and they give God the glory. And they turned back and said, God, here am I. Here's my hands. Here's my feet. Here's my offering. Here, here's my life. How many know when you're truly, truly touched by God, all of a sudden something happens to you? You want to do something for God. It's not just for you anymore. See, this man was on the outside looking in every day of this gate. But it was time, listen, it was time to cross over those gates and go into the church. What did that represent? It represented his barrier. It was time to cross his barrier. Listen, your barrier may not be church, but your barrier may be your complex. Your barrier might be your insecurity. Your barrier might feel like, you, you know what, someone else is better than me, or someone else is greater than me, or your barrier might be, you know what, I, I have a sickness and I can't do certain things, I can't go certain places. Your barrier might be, I'm too young, or your barrier might be, I'm too old. Your bar I don't know what your barrier might be, something in your mind that's stuck. Listen, just like this man, he says, I'm tired of being on the outside, looking in, everyone else going to church, everyone passing me by, going into the temple. Today is my day. God healed me of my crippled, my crippled legs. And I'm not just going to let my legs go do what I want to do. But I'm going to take my healing and I'm going to give it back to Jesus. And say, Jesus, here I am. And use my life. See, this is one of my favorite stories. Because he was a very unexpected man to walk into church. Just like most of us. We were the last person... We were the last person that people thought would be in church. Someone say amen. And just like you were the last person or one of the last people people would think that would come to church, I come here to tell you you're also going to be one of those people that nobody thinks. But God is going to use you in a way. And God is going to raise you up in a way that only God's going to get the glory. People are going to look and say, how? And all you're going to do is point up and give God the glory. Because God's going to shock people through your life. I said, God is going to shock people through your life. People are going to wonder why. People are going to wonder how going to point up and give God the glory. I'm not supposed to be here tonight. We're not supposed to be here tonight. We're not supposed to be here on a Wednesday night in church. Some of us were doing all kinds of other things, but here we are in the house of the Lord. And God, the Holy Spirit, wants to reignite you. He wants to rekindle that fire in you. And he wants you to stand up. I said he wants you to stand up. He went into the gates. 
He was no longer sitting at the gates. He was no longer looking on the outside. He was no longer the outcast. He was no longer the black sheep. He was no longer the forgotten. But now everybody's eyes were on him. Year after year, every eye passed him by. Nobody knew him. Nobody cared about him. But now, eh. Now everybody's eyes are on this man. And everybody's amazed and everybody's praising God because of what Jesus did for his life. This man's testimony opened doors for the gospel to be preached. The Bible says they were all filled with amazement and they were all filled with wonder. How did this happen? How did this happen? I come here to tell you, listen, God is going to do something new in your life tonight. Just like, just like this man didn't expect it. Some of you didn't even come expecting tonight. But the Lord is going to shock you. The Lord is going to reveal something to you that he's been trying to reveal to you for a while. See, like I said, I've traveled the world. I've seen so many beautiful things in my life, even up to this point. But there's nothing to me more beautiful than seeing God use somebody that's not supposed to be used. The last pick, the overlooked. I got news for you tonight. The greatest man that ever walked this earth was overlooked too. The greatest man that ever walked this earth, people even forgot about him. At the greatest pain of his life, even his closest friends left him. But it was because God was going to get glory out of his life. Because his life was going to matter. And his life was going to make an impact. We know who I'm talking about, Jesus. Your life matters tonight. See, God can do something special in your heart tonight. He can heal your body. He can heal your body. Can God heal your body? Will he heal it? Can he deliver you of something tonight? Can he reignite you tonight? Can he walk out of here not just healed, but walk out of here whole? I want you to lift up your hands tonight. Are you tired of sitting? Are you tired of sitting? Are you tired of just existing? Listen. I learned a long time ago that I was not born on this earth just to pay bills and die one day. There was a greater purpose. A greater purpose. I love, I love, I love, I love this earth. I love my family. I love my kids. But even I told my wife, I says, I love you so much. I love my wife so much. I'm grateful. But when I married my wife, I says, the reason I'm marrying you is not just because I love you, but because I want to do more for God. And we're going to do more for God together. Something about staying grateful that will keep your passion no matter what season, no matter how the devil tries to take it. If you want that this, this tonight, I want you to lift up your hands one more time. Lift up those hands to the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you would just fill this room. Holy Spirit, that you would fill every part of our bodies. From the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Lord, renew our passions. Lord, renew our zeal. Lord, help us to not be sitting around 
and just waiting for things to happen, but help us to step into the call that you've called us to be and called us to do. Lift up your hands and sing that song to the Lord. I'm going to open the altar just a second, but lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Come on. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadow. Burn like a fire. Come on. Worship the Lord for a second. Come on. I want to share one more testimony with you, then we'll open these altars real quick. Because I, I had the Lord told me to share it. I have to share it before I open the altars. There was a couple in my church, graduated the home. Wife was in the church, or they weren't married, but they were in the church. Got married. Great testimony, you know, beautiful, beautiful success story, all these great things. But their first year into marriage, struggling, even wanting to quit at some point, prayed and prayed with them. It was, a, it was a bit of a battle, but then they got the breakthrough. About a year later, they come to me and say, Pastor, man, we want to do more marriage things in the church. We want to, you know... Uh, we want to, there's, there's marriage needs. I says, you know what, man? You guys start putting together events. Just do it. And they started putting together events. They started doing things with the married couples. They got so good at it that I had to, had to put them over the married couples. My marriage ministry is one of the greatest ministries I have in my church right now because of that couple. I love our marriage ministry. Listen, your marriage might be on the rocks tonight, but the Holy Spirit is going to heal your marriage. That's why the Lord wants me to share that with you. If the Holy Spirit has spoken to you in any way, I want you to run to these altars, and I want you to let the Holy Ghost minister to your heart tonight. Come on, let's sing a song. Come on, step out of your seats. Come on. Your name is Come on, step out of your seats. Come on. Your name is Shine through the shadow, burn like a fire. Your name is power, your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Break every strong. If you need a healing in your body or in your heart, I want you to lift up your hand, but don't lift it up if you don't believe. Don't lift it up if you don't believe it. I'm not going to lay hands on anybody, but the Lord might heal you where you stand. Are you tired of being in pain? Are you tired of sitting at the gate, whatever your gate symbolizes? Tired of sitting there? Well, I'm going to use the Word of God to believe for your healing. I'm going to use the Word of God.
It is the word of the Lord. Then Peter said, silver and gold I have none. Lift up your hands. Silver and gold I have none. But what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed of your body right now. Real soft, sing it. Go ahead and sing it, go ahead. Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Heal your people right now, Jesus. Heal them of sickness. Heal them of disease. Heal them of anxiety. This is a house of Heal them. Miracles. Heal them of stress. Heal them of Come emotional alive. pain. Heal them Jesus. right now in the name Come of Jesus. Alive. In the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. In the name of Jesus. We bring everything, everything to the feet. To the feet of Jesus. Everything. everything in the name of Jesus. Father, we humble ourselves. We humble ourselves. We humble ourselves. We humble ourselves, Jesus. Listen, again, I'm going to use the Word of God for the healing. The Bible says that when this leopard, listen, oof, when this leopard was healed, all ten of them, all ten were healed, the Bible says. All ten were healed. But only one walked away whole. And the only one that walked away whole was the only one that was grateful. See, I shouldn't be here tonight. Sometimes I get overwhelmed because I know I shouldn't be here tonight. I'm grateful. And if you're grateful today, I want you just to think about the goodness of God over your life. Think about how good he's been to you. And what's going to happen to some of you is that you're going to experience a praise inside of you. Because the enemy wants you to dwell on whatever it is that you're facing. And he wants you to be so discouraged. But you're going to have praise that's going to overtake your mind. Gratefulness is going to overtake you. You're going to think about your kids. You're going to think about your job. You're going to think about what you have. You're going to think about something that's good. The Bible says to focus on what is lovely, what is pure. Focus on what is good. Focus right now in the name of Jesus. Focus on the goodness of God. Focus on the joy of the Lord. Focus on the love of God. Focus tonight. Focus tonight. Come on. In Jesus' name. Come on. Jesus, let praise be on your lips. Let praise be on your lips. Let praise be on your lips. Come on. Let praise be on your lips. 
Thank you, Jesus. 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 feel listen you know what I feel tonight I feel joy there's your joy back there's just your, your joy there's your joy that's a fruit of the spirit right gratefulness is a fruit of the spirit but joy is a fruit of the spirit how many how many have joy tonight Don't move around yet. Come on, how many have joy tonight? How many have joy tonight? How many have joy tonight? Swelling inside of you. How many have joy tonight? Come on, how many have joy tonight? Come on, clap those hands if you got joy tonight. Come on. Turn me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior. Come on. Because he healed my heart, he changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. Hold on. Just, just bear with me for a second, okay? I want you to sing this song, but I want you to close your eyes. Break it down a little bit. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to remember the day you got saved. Sing it, sing it, but close your eyes and do it. Come on. Sing it one more time. Come on. I want you to oh, don't don't pick me up. up. Come on. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the savior. Because he healed my heart. Now, hold on, almost there. Now, you can open your eyes. Now, how many else shouldn't be here tonight? Uh, how, many, how many shouldn't be here tonight? I, I'm not saying you're, you're you know, you, were, you got saved yesterday, but how many remember the day you gave your life to Jesus? And because you shouldn't be here tonight, whatever the devil has done, he cannot take away your salvation. Ooh, come on. Listen. You want to make the devil mad? Tell him, you can't take my salvation. He could try to take those other things, but he can't take your salvation. And listen. You know when you clap? Why don't you clap? You know when you, listen. When you clap, you make the devil nervous. I said, when you clap, you make the devil nervous. Because he's thinking to himself, I'm trying my best to take their joy. I'm trying my best to take away their peace. I'm trying my best to take away their happiness. But they're still in church. They're still coming to Wednesday night. They're still clapping. They're still thinking, God, come on. I want you to clap and sing it like you're grateful tonight. Come on.
Can we do get up, get up? Come on. Clap. Get up, get up, come on. Yeah, come on, see it up. She get up, get up, get up, and get up out of that grave. Hey. Get up, get up, get up, and get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Hey. Get up, get up, get up, hey. Somebody say gratitude. gratitude. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here tonight. But before we go ahead and do that, I want to go ahead and introduce all those that are viewing online. We want to be a blessing here tonight. We're going to go ahead and receive a love offering for our guest speaker. He's come a very, very long way. We're going to go ahead and put the QR code right here if you want to go ahead and give and be a blessing. But otherwise, don't forget that this Sunday, we're going to be having another celebration service. Get connected with those. Don't be in such a rush to leave. Be, be, hang out. Get to know one another. Get connected. God bless you. Consider yourself dismissed.